It's Thursday, July 11th. I'm Priyanka Arabindi. And I'm Juanita Tolliver, and this is What A Day, the pod that hoped to never hear from Ron DeSantis ever again. After it was reported that he would not speak at next week's Republican National Convention, outlets are now saying that he will have some time on the mic. Apparently there was a schedule change. What self-respecting person would want to join the coordination for a convicted felon and twice impeached one-term president? I think you answered your question there with self-respecting. <laughs> On today's show, Democratic lawmakers say Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas should be investigated for ethics violations. Plus, I am announcing my retirement because Taco Bell is opening up a (laughs) pop-up retirement community next month, and I would like to enjoy a tiki cocktail, Bel Grande. That sounds absolutely fabulous. But first, there have been some major updates on the story we're all watching. The fate of President Biden's candidacy for re-election. Vermont Senator Peter Welch called for President Biden to withdraw from the presidential race in an op-ed for The Washington Post yesterday. He is the first Democratic senator to do so. He wrote, quote, Vermont loves Joe Biden. President Biden and Vice President Harris received a larger vote percentage here than in any other state. But regular Vermonters are worried that he can't win this time, and they're terrified of another Trump presidency. Also, yesterday, former Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi spoke to MSNBC about her thoughts on folks calling for Biden to step aside. And I've said to everyone, let's just hold off whatever you're thinking, either tell somebody privately, but you don't have to put that out on the table until we see how we go this week. I don't think everyone is taking that advice. It feels like Dominoes are falling here. What has Congress been saying about this? Well, yesterday, Axios reported that the Republican-led House Oversight Committee subpoenaed three senior White House aides to discuss Biden's health and mental acuity later this month. Republicans also requested to speak with Biden's personal doctor, Kevin O'Connor. No surprise there that Republicans are taking advantage of this moment to, you know, do what they do, drag Biden down as far as they can. Absolutely. I mean, they do it when there is no issue. And now that there is blood in the water, of course, they have jumped on it. And, you know, we also have some commentary from Hollywood as well. What is going on with that? Right. George Clooney penned an op-ed in The New York Times yesterday describing the fundraiser for Biden that he co-hosted last month. Clooney wrote, quote, it's devastating to say it, but the Joe Biden I was with three weeks ago at the fundraiser was not the Joe big effing deal Biden of 2010. He wasn't even the Joe Biden of 2020. He was the same man we all witnessed at the debate. In the midst of all of this turmoil among Democrats, we wanted to learn more about how voters are feeling. Many analysts and political strategists are pointing to the polls and sounding the alarm about Biden's candidacy and its impact on down ballot races. Of course, polls are merely a snapshot of voter sentiment at a specific moment in time, and they are not predictive. But they do include information that campaigns and political forecasters use to make strategic decisions as the campaign progresses. Yesterday, Biden's former communications director urged the presidential campaign to show its polling, saying on the social media platform X, if they have data that supports the path to victory that they see, they should put it out there now. I know the campaign has since released that they do believe they still have a path to victory through Latino voters, but let's dive into some of that recent data. That was the focus of the latest episode of Crooked Media's Polar Coaster. That is our series exclusively for Friends of the Pod subscribers, and it features former White House communications director and Pod Save America host Dan Pfeiffer, as well as producer Caroline Reston. So what did they have to say about all of this? One of the first takeaways from the episode is that based on the most recent polls, one respected political forecaster has shifted its outlook in six states. Take a listen. Biden is behind. He's behind nationally. He's behind the swing states. The Cook Political Report, which is probably the premier election forecasting publication out there, just earlier this week changed their ratings for six states, Arizona, Nevada, and Georgia. They moved them from toss-up to lean Republican. And they took Minnesota, New Hampshire, and Nebraska's second congressional district and moved them from likely Democrat to lean Democrat. They make their decisions based not just on public polling, But a lot of campaigns and political action committees share their internal polling with the Cook Political Report to try to shift these races because you are more likely to get donations and support and endorsements if you are a toss-up race than a lean Republican race. And so this is not them throwing darts at a dartboard. This is a very well-researched, well-considered decision. To put that in perspective, if it is truly the case, and time will tell, that Arizona, Nevada, and Georgia are not necessarily winnable for Biden – 
That means he has to win Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, and the second congressional district of Nebraska to get to exactly 270 electoral votes. So his path is much narrower than Trump's. I think there's been a lot of gaslighting from a lot of pro-Biden people, including the Biden campaign, in the wake of the debate. The reality is Biden was behind in the debate. He's more behind now because of the debate. Yeah, the debate impact here really shows how much more narrow that path for Biden's campaign to reach 270 electoral votes is. But also, no one should take anything too lightly from the Cook Political Report, because as Dan mentioned, they get their data from a lot of places. This is meticulously planned. Right. But I just have to remind our audience, this is not predictive. It is just a snapshot as of July 11th, 2024. Right. Sticking to the swing states, here's what Dan and Caroline flagged about Trump's gains in the polls in Nevada, Pennsylvania, and Georgia since the first presidential debate at the end of June. When I was doing research for this episode, I was looking at swing states polls post debate. And I just want you to like talk a little bit more mm. through it because these numbers were like really alarming to me. It was Nevada, Trump leads 47 to 41. His lead increase went from three points mm. to six points. In Pennsylvania, his lead increase went from three points to five points. In Georgia, four points to five points. Like, that's really scary to read when you know that this election is going to come down to a couple thousand people in these swing states. Are you alarmed by this, yeah. what feels like yes. a massive swing? I think we need to let's see this settle out. In the internal polls right now, not the Biden campaign polls, based on what we understand, not the Biden campaign polls. Their polls seem to be more optimistic than everyone else, and their pollsters are very good. So I just want to stipulate that they're very, very good. But the polls for various Senate campaigns and gubernatorial campaigns and state parties are worse than that, right? I've seen polls that have Biden down as much as 10 in some of the swing states, including uh, Pennsylvania. And so... Is that really what he's down? Probably not, but he is down in those states. I want to emphasize, let this settle out a little bit. (laughs) Because when the news cycle has been dominating the narrative around concerns about Biden, you have members of Congress stepping forward, you have disarray among Democrats, right? Of course, there's going to be these reactions, heightened reactions from voters. But I am curious to see what this is a month out, two months out, what it looks like after the Republican National Convention next week, because I'm sure people will have more reactions. I know. And it's tough to say because everyone, as always, seems to want to see things immediately. And there's not a lot of time to spare between now and the election. But as you, as Dan, as everyone knows, these things, they change over time. Another big factor in this presidential election is the impact of Biden's candidacy on down-ballot races, those critical Senate and House races that will determine control of Congress, as well as gubernatorial races where Republicans are putting up their best anti-abortion, anti-LGBTQ candidates like in North Carolina. But based on the latest data, there hasn't been much of an impact down-ballot just yet. Is there polling on how Biden's debate performance is affecting Democrats running in states? Like, is it affecting someone like Senator Tammy Baldwin? Is it affecting Democrats down the ballot in a negative way? We have not seen that yet in the public polling. Senate Democrats continue to outrun Biden. That was true before the debate. That is true now. The AARP had a poll in Wisconsin that came out earlier this week. It was a bipartisan poll conducted by a firm that polls for the Biden campaign and a firm that polls for the Trump campaign. And so I think you treat this as a high quality poll. And that poll had Biden down a few points in Wisconsin, but Tammy Baldwin outrunning Biden by 12 points. Now, this is the interesting part, because if you have voters turning out en masse for someone like Senator Tammy Baldwin in Wisconsin, you have to understand that there is very little likelihood that those same voters will either leave the presidential race blank or vote against Joe Biden at the top of the ticket. I think people can look at this and just try to understand that this presidential election is not happening in a vacuum. And as the numbers show, as of today, there's not a negative impact down ballot. Listen, there are a lot of tough things that we've been seeing in polls lately. This, not one of them. Something something good for once. <laughs> she said there's a glimmer of light. I'll take it. 
<laughs> Friends of the Pod can listen to the full episode of Polar Coaster, which came out today. Tune in to hear more of Dan digging into the numbers and outlining what he believes Democrats should do next to turn things around. If you're not a friend of the pod, sign up today at cricket.com slash friends. And that's the latest for now. We'll get to some headlines in just a moment. But if you like our show, please make sure to subscribe and share it with your friends. We'll be right back after some ads. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. With the internet's best converting checkout, 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms, Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers. In fact, Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash podcast free. All lowercase, shopify.com slash podcast free, shopify.com slash podcast free. Okay, it's true. You might have a group chat to dissect your latest lapse in judgment with your girls. But when it comes to the Supreme Court ruling on women's organs and ignoring oath-breaking insurrectionists, it's going to take more than an emoji reaction to figure out what it all means and how it affects you. That's where strict scrutiny comes in. Think of us as your personal group chat for all things SCOTUS related. If everyone in your group chat had constitutional law degrees or was constitutional law curious. We are breaking down every case, scrutinizing every bad decision, and giving you so much inside scoop on court culture, Andy Cohen is shaking in his boots. Wait, who is that again? Find new episodes of Strict Scrutiny every Monday wherever you get your podcasts and now on YouTube. And with the track record of the current court, there will be a lot to discuss. Let's wrap up with some headlines. Headlines. Two Senate Democrats have asked Attorney General Merrick Garland to appoint a special counsel to investigate Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas. Sheldon Whitehouse of Rhode Island and Ron Wyden of Oregon want the Justice Department to look into whether Thomas violated federal tax and ethics laws. They say that he accepted luxury trips and gifts from wealthy donors worth hundreds of thousands of dollars, some of it unreported. In a letter dated last week that became public on Tuesday, the two senators wrote that the evidence, quote, plainly suggests that Justice Thomas has committed numerous willful violations of federal ethics and false statement laws. I mean, people, this is happening in public. We know he did it. And lives that sponsored life. (laughs) Neither the Supreme Court nor the Justice Department has publicly commented on the letter. Meanwhile, New York Democratic Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez filed articles of impeachment against Thomas and fellow ultra-conservative Justice Samuel Alito on Wednesday. My only question is, why has it taken this long? Mm. We've known this. She said that their failure to recuse themselves from cases in which they had financial or personal stake, quote, constitutes a grave threat to American rule of law. She cited both gifts they received from donors and recent cases related to January 6th. As a reminder, Alito was out there flying flags at his houses, plural, that were carried by some of the insurrectionists on January 6th, while Thomas's wife, Ginny, was actively involved in former President Trump's efforts to overturn the election. It doesn't get any more clear cut than that, in my opinion. I don't know. What are we doing here? I hope that the American public keeps these facts front of mind as they're getting these horrible decisions out of this right wing court. Right. The trial against actor Alec Baldwin over the fatal 2021 shooting of cinematographer Helena Hutchins on the set of the movie Rust began on Wednesday. The DA for Santa Fe, New Mexico, the county where the shooting took place, charged Baldwin with involuntary manslaughter last year. Baldwin pleaded not guilty, maintaining his claim that the gun fired accidentally. Prosecutors argued that Baldwin recklessly handled the gun that killed Hutchins and skipped crucial safety checks on set. Baldwin's defense attorney told the jury yesterday that his client, quote, committed no crime. He was an actor acting. The prosecution also called two police officers who responded to the incident to the stand. They also showed the jury the officer's body camera footage from the day of the shooting, showing their interactions with Baldwin and others on set. Under New Mexico law, involuntary manslaughter is a fourth-degree felony that carries a punishment of up to 18 months in prison. Virginia Republican Glenn Youngkin became the latest governor to call for restrictions on cell phone use in K-12 schools. In an executive order he signed on Tuesday, Youngkin directed the state education department to come up with guidance for school districts to help them adopt cell phone-free education. 
Youngkin cited the risk that social media and phones pose to kids' mental health and safety. In a statement, he said that limiting the use of phones in schools will, quote, promote a healthier and more focused educational environment. Across the country, the governors of Florida and Indiana have already signed laws that ban cell phones from classrooms, while the governors of California and New York are pushing similar efforts to limit phones in schools. Last month, the U.S. Surgeon General also called for tobacco-style warnings to be put on social media apps. This seems like something that is getting both sides of the aisle on board. And finally... Taco Bell is starting a new business venture. The fast food company announced yesterday that it is opening a, quote, early retirement community experience in San Diego next month. Sign us up. Right? Like, please. (laughs) The Cantinas is a two-day event exclusively for Taco Bell Rewards members. Members 21 and up will have access to amenities and activities you typically associate with seniors living in retirement homes. Think bocce ball croquet and arts and crafts projects like knitting okay as a geriatric at heart i love this i know a lot of young people who like to knit (laughs) right come on croquet less so but bocce for sure (laughs) taco bell's marketing official said that the cantinas is an opportunity for their rewards members to quote live their moss however they want committed to the bit (laughs) The experience runs August 17th and 18th. Reservations open this week. Sign me up immediately. I'm happy to host What A Day from the cantinas. Yeah, we're going to do a live show from this retirement community. Yes. We're going to go wild. I love it. Honestly, Taco Bell, get in contact here. You have some fans on this program. We would like to talk about your tacos. Uh, Specifically, your Doritos Locos tacos with fire sauce. I'll take three, please. (laughs) I love it. Every part of this is masterful. And those are the headlines. (laughs) One more thing before we go. SCOTUS seems to think that having Trump as a monarch sounds great. And to that, we say no effing way. Or as Justice Sotomayor put it, with fear for our democracy, I dissent. Show that you are mad as hell about the highest court's recent decisions taking power away from government agencies and giving the president permission to authorize a coup. Yes, they actually did that. With a quote taken from Sotomayor's dissent to the court's terrifying presidential immunity decision, this t-shirt shows where you stand. Get your I dissent tee at crooked.com slash store now. That's all for today. If you like the show, make sure you subscribe, leave a review, let me off this polar coaster, and tell your friends to listen. And if you are into reading and not just the Taco Bell retirement activity calendar like me, what a day is also a nightly newsletter. Check it out and subscribe at crooked.com slash subscribe. I'm Priyanka Arabindi. I'm Juanita Tolliver. And, and see, see you at, at the, the burrito, burrito bocce, bocce ball, ball course. course. Can I confess something? Always. I don't like burritos. I don't like the bunched up tortilla at the end. It just like is not good. Me either, really. But I thought you were going to make it about bocce ball. I don't really get bocce, but maybe someone can teach me. I love bocce. It's like grass bowling. (laughs) What a Day is a production of Crooked Media. It's recorded and mixed by Bill Lance. Our associate producers are Raven Yamamoto and Natalie Bettendorf. We had production help today from Michelle Aloy, Greg Walters, and Julia Clare. Our showrunner is Erica Morrison, and our executive producer is Adrian Hill. Our theme music is by Colin Gilliard and Kashaka. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. With the internet's best converting checkout, 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms, Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers. In fact, Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash podcast free. All lowercase, shopify.com slash podcast free, shopify.com slash podcast free. (laughs) 